Good morning and welcome to online worship with Metropolitan Community Church of Portland. If you have a candle, I'd invite you to light your candle as I light my candle and we begin our time of worship together in prayer. God of love and light and presence, we're grateful to gather together in spirit, if not in body, with one another today. We pray that your spirit hover over each of us wherever we are, that your presence might touch us and open us to new understandings of your movement within us and among us. Continue to inspire and guide us as individuals and as a community seeking to faithfully follow you. In your holy name, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Good morning again and welcome to MCC Portland. I'm Reverend Nathan Meckley, pronouns he, him, his, and I have the honor of being the pastor of Metropolitan Community Church of Portland, and we are delighted that you are joining us for our online worship. I want to extend a few words of welcome to let you know what we invite you to do with us as we worship online. If you're going to be worshiping online with us in the future, I encourage you to have a candle with you so that when we light a candle at the beginning of worship, we do that as a shared action, even if we're not physically present with one another, we're united in spirit in sharing that action. As well, we have communion every Sunday at MCC. So wherever you are, I invite you to have some cup, some bread, that when we share that sacred meal later, you can do so where you are, and we can do so as a community united in spirit. Also, when you join us for online worship, I really encourage you to post hello in the comment section. Say hello, let us know that you're here, let us greet you. We can't always see who's worshiping with us online, but if you post in the comment section, that's a great way for us to greet you. Also, throughout our worship service, we encourage you to comment and respond to the songs that are sung, the prayers that are prayed. Whatever touches your heart, just respond to that in the comment section and we can interact with you. It's a wonderful way to be engaged even if we're apart from one another. As you were signing on for our online worship, you'll recall you had the opportunity to complete our digital connection card, and I really urge you to do that. It's a perfect way to give us your contact information so we can stay in touch. Also, if there's been any change, please update that in the connection card. It's also the perfect way to share your prayers of joy, your prayers of concern that we then share with our prayer team who prays with and for our community regularly. Also, you had the opportunity to make your offering online. You'll have a couple more opportunities to do that before we part from one another in worship. So I just want to say, on Saturday, we had our socially distant drive-in ice cream social. If you haven't yet figured out, if you watched our online worship, I record these things on Saturday. So I am going to say both in advance and in retrospect Gosh, we had a fun time at our ice cream social. So for those that joined us there, thank you so much. And we hope to be able to share more of those opportunities safely in different ways in the future, even while we continue to do most of our ministry in this online fashion. You'll recall that we are inviting people to send a brief hello and welcome video of your own so we can see your face and hear your voice because we can't see and hear one another very readily at this time. We do not have this Sunday a welcome video, a hello video from someone else. So I just want to urge you again, please take a moment and record yourself saying hello, letting us know that you're well, how you miss us, and send that video recording directly to digital at mccportland.com. So that's enough for me at the moment. Let's continue in our worship together by singing. MCC. Well. Holy Spirit's here. I'm glad you guys came. For those of you that, that, that chilled out with us at the uh, ice cream social yesterday, that was really cool to see you all. And I uh, hope you had fun. We sure did. But there was no lactose intolerance. I mean, we gotta teach a little bit more tolerance for lactose, I gotta be mm -hmm. honest. 
Um, but uh, be sure and clap where you're at and uh, push all the buttons and all that stuff uh, and have fun today.
know if you've ever noticed or this has ever happened in your life, but life is not always smooth sailing, is it? There are storms, there's chaos in our own lives and in the life of the world around us. I think just this week there's continuing unrest in our streets. There's the horrendous explosion in Beirut and the devastation of an already suffering country and peoples. There is chaos coming from misinformation at the highest levels of our government as we approach an election in only a few months. There are storms and there is chaos swirling around us right now in our own lives and in the world. The scripture we are about to hear is actually the scripture that is scheduled for the lectionary, which means that thousands upon thousands of churches around the world will be hearing this scripture today that we share. And I believe that this particular famous story speaks directly to our experience as people of faith at this time of storm and chaos. So as we hear this famous story read, I'd just like you to listen with open ears and open heart, and if there is a word or a phrase or an image that speaks to you, I'd invite you to just post that in the comment section so we can see how this scripture touches you before I begin my own uh, sharing around the scripture. Today's scripture reading is from Matthew chapter 14 verses 22 to 33. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? 
When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the chosen one of God. That is one of the most well-known miracle stories of Jesus from Scripture. In the Gospel according to Matthew, from which we heard just now, this story immediately follows the equally, perhaps even more famous, story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. And here in this story, Jesus and later Peter, as we hear, do this astounding act of walking on water. And in our common parlance, in conversation, we even still use that expression, thinking someone can walk on water. We usually seem to be saying that they can do no wrong, which in and of itself is an unnatural and miraculous thing to state in and of itself when you come right down to it, that someone could do no wrong. But a more thoughtful look at this story from Matthew, which is also shared in the Gospels of Mark and John, reveals a little bit more than just this astounding and miraculous act, I believe. It's a familiar story to many of us, and as you heard, it goes like this. After feeding the 5,000, Jesus withdraws to be alone once again, and the disciples board a boat. He sends them on the boat. And in the face of strong winds and a storm on the sea, the disciples have cast out into sea because it's actually safer to be on the water than close to shore where you could be dashed against the rocks. And in the morning, while the storm is still raging, the disciples are frightened to spot a figure coming to them across the water. They assume it to be a ghost. Jesus calls out and identifies himself as that figure. Now, Peter, apparently unsure or unconvinced, maybe, that this is, in fact, Jesus, wants proof and says, if it's you, Jesus, tell me to come across the water to you. Now, just pause for a moment and Swimming was not a skill that was cultivated in many ancient Near Eastern civilizations. Even fishermen, in Jewish culture, even fishermen were not known to be good swimmers. Seems a little ironic. So Peter himself was unlikely to be able to swim very well at all, as we see later in this passage in only a few verses. So I think perhaps impulsive Peter should have thought through this dare a little bit more. Yet Jesus invites Peter, come. And impulsive Peter gets out of the boat and astonishingly actually himself begins to walk across the water. Then the storm itself seems to remind him how vulnerable and frail he is, and he is frightened and begins to sink. Peter calls out to be saved, and Jesus reaches out and draws him up out of the waves. And Jesus apparently reprimands Peter, perhaps gently, but nonetheless points out that his doubt, his lack of faith. And when they get into the boat, the wind calms, the storm ceases, and those on the boat, the disciples, proclaim Jesus to be the chosen one, the child of God. So the story goes. On the surface, it is an astounding miracle, a display of unbelievable power. Yet I suggest that if this is a miracle story only, this is a story about Jesus as superhero who has power over natural forces. This is one of those miracle stories that is very, very hard to provide some kind of rational or scientific explanation for. 
Yet let's recall that for the original audience, those who heard and told this story over and again, the issue at stake was not whether or not Jesus could have performed or did perform such an act. The miraculous, while it was always considered extraordinary and out of the ordinary, was possible in their worldview. What counted for them, and I suggest what still counts for us today, is when we read these stories, is why was it an important story? To remember why this story would have been told and what the miraculous act would have meant, the meaning of the story. So this short story about walking on water is not just about a display of miraculous power over natural forces. It is full of spiritual symbolism that we should pause to notice. In the early church, and actually throughout the church's history, a boat was often seen as a symbol of the church. So in some ways, this boat is a symbol of the community of faith. Peter, who was not just thought to be a founder of a church hierarchy. That came later. In Matthew, Jesus, uh, Peter, pardon, Peter is portrayed as the prototypical disciple. So when we look at what Peter does, we're actually supposed to read ourselves into that character. But moreover, the sea itself is a powerful spiritual and a powerful biblical symbol. It is raw nature beyond any illusion of control that we might have. The sea, dangerous, unpredictable, chaotic, the ancient biblical symbol for chaos. In fact, if you recall the story of creation, it is the watery chaos, chaos out of which God draws creative order. So if we focus on believing or disbelieving, the miraculous act, I would say the superficial layer of the story, we too easily miss the point I believe it makes. This isn't just a story about ancient disciples on a stormy sea. It's a story about people of faith who are fearful, who are surrounded by a chaos that threatens to overtake them, and that can happen on dry land just as easily as it can on water, can't it? Jesus walking on this water is not just Jesus as a powerful show-off, but it's a witness to the power of God they knew through Jesus was greater and stronger than any fear or chaos they or we can encounter. I'll say that again. It's a story about the power of God as we know in Jesus to be greater and stronger than any fear or chaos we know. And that poignant exchange between Peter and Jesus in the story, whether such a thing happens on dry land or on water, it's just sometimes like Jesus and us, isn't it? When I read this passage of scripture, I'm reminded of an old evangelical praise song. And if you know it, I invite you to sing it along with me. Love lifted me. I was seeking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply pained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Here's the chorus. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. You repeat it. Love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. That's a good old chestnut that we may not have heard in a long time. And that 
song is directly, as you can tell, and listening to the words, directly inspired by this biblical story. Haven't you had, haven't you heard of people in moments like that? Maybe you have had them yourself. Stories about how trouble, danger, chaos, brokenness seems to overwhelm us and somehow the power and the love of God reaches and lifts us up. I know I have. Those stories remind us that we cannot make it on our own. Even if we're good swimmers, and even if we think that we can tread water for hours or weeks or years, without this divine hand from outside, that chaos and brokenness and fear, that sinking, may in fact overwhelm us. That hymn names Jesus Master of the Sea. Yet without minimizing the truth of those spiritual rescues that we may have had, that we may have experienced, I do think this story and that song, the theology of that song, begs a question, an important question for me. Do we believe that Jesus is a divine lifeguard that is always going to rescue? If yes, what happens when we, or when others, aren't rescued? Where is lifeguard Jesus then? What kind of rescue story can this be when our lives seem to teach us that such rescues do not always happen? Where and what is that love lifting me then? So with that, I dare say, hard and eternal question, looking at this story again, especially when I look more closely at Peter, whom we are to envision even as ourselves, I see one more lesson for us in this story. Jesus seems to reprimand Peter for a lack of faith, but what exactly was the shortcoming. We seem to assume, perhaps, that if Peter somehow believed better or stronger or believed just a little bit longer, he would have stayed on top of the water. Treading water, maybe, in that sense. But to me, it seems rather that Peter's shortcoming or his, quote, lack of faith, was that he allowed the storm and his doubts to define the situation instead of allowing his relationship and trust in Jesus to define the situation. I'll say that again. What happened was he allowed the storm, the doubts, the fears, to define the situation instead of allowing his relationship and his trust in Jesus to define the situation. Peter's question actually foreshadows it. Peter says, if it's you, Jesus, that is a prove it to me challenge that's issued. At the start, Peter already has doubt that this is Jesus. Then while what? Walking on the water, the fear of the storm possesses him. Peter is defined and gripped by the chaos around him, defined and gripped by his doubts and his fears, more so defined by the chaos and the doubt and the fear than defined by the confidence that he has in Jesus. 
If this is a rescue story, it cannot be a story of rescue from every stormy circumstance. Then love lifted me becomes a kind of a random, some of the times only kind of blessing. But if this is supposed to be an all the time faith building story, which I believe it is, then it is an affirmation that our faith can always lift us from being defined by the storm. It's an affirmation that our faith can lift us from being defined by the storm. If I can embellish the words of Jesus to Peter, it would be words to perhaps you, perhaps me. I would add, oh, you of little faith, do not believe this passing storm is stronger and bigger than your relationship to me. O oh, you of little faith, do not believe this passing storm is stronger or greater than your relationship with me. Are you, are we, in the midst of any swirling chaos or storm? You can perhaps think of one. And if not, one is bound to show up. Are we fearful and questioning, waiting in the boat? Are we walking on water confidently above it all, even for a time? The story demonstrates that even when following the voice of Jesus, walking on water is a temporary condition. There will be moments when our fears may overtake us, times when our faithfulness may falter temporarily, at least, sinking, trying to hold on, treading water, growing more and more exhausted. This ancient story reminds us, reminds me, there is a hand already a hand always reaching out. It's up to us. Which will define us more? Which will define us more? The storm or our belief in the love that lifts. Amen. It is well Metropolitan Community Church is a praying church, and I ask that you join with me now as we lift up our prayers of the people throughout this congregation and throughout the world. Most blessed and loving God, we come before you this day, this time, this hour. We ask your blessings upon each and every one of us, for we are in a world that is faced with strong boisterousness of individuals against individuals. We are faced with vile and contemptible words that are flowing among us and on each and every one of us. We ask your blessings this day, loving God, for the many people of Lebanon that have endured a massive blast. We ask your blessings and love on people that are suffering a strenuous pandemic that is flowing throughout the world. We know through your strength and your love, pain will be eased and suffering will be downsized. We ask you, loving God, to send forth your love and blessing on our community that is enduring demonstrations, suffering, 
pain, and violence. We know that through your power and your love, we can endure this chaotic world and these chaotic events that we are faced with. We give you thanks, loving God, for blessing each and every one of us, for enabling us, for empowering us. And we give you thanks for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. In your many names, I ask these things, loving God. Amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, oh, oh, oh. take a couple of moments and share with you what's going on at MCC Portland. Just to remind you, our worship services on Sunday continue to be online only until we advise otherwise. We are hopeful to be able to regather, but for our safety as community and our, our community at large, we're continuing to gather online only for our worship. If you want to stay uh, up to date on things that are happening, I also urge you to read the e-newsletter that is sent weekly. We send that directly to your email if we have your correct email address, another great reason to connect to complete the connection card. But also those e-newsletters are found here on our Facebook page, so you can review that information at any time that you want to find out more. A reminder, please do send in a hello video to us. Let us see your face and hear your voice greeting us as community. If you want to connect during the week, I urge you to join me for our Wednesday 6 p.m. midweek prayer. That is both online and also I'm on site at 2828 Southeast Stevens, so you can join us either way. The Zoom link is found in the e-newsletter and also here on our Facebook page. And also, if you join me in person on site, I will be masked and I'll ask you to do so and we'll keep appropriate physical distance. But there are both ways that you can join us for midweek prayer. Also, on Thursday evening, we have our ongoing discussion group that is at 7 p.m. And the link to that discussion group is also found here on our Facebook page and in the e-newsletter. Our Congregational Life Team is available at any time to offer prayer and caring conversation and extra support to you. So please email or call our Congregational Life Team directly or also our church office so that we can provide any support that you might need. I'm very grateful that this week we at MCC Portland have launched a special support for our community. So many people right now are experiencing extraordinary financial concern at this time, particularly since assistance has run out for many persons and has not yet been restored. This week, we have launched an emergency assistance fund for any individual or household in our local area. Now, if you are a member or friend of MCC Portland, which you likely are since you are watching us online, if you're a member or friend, please, if you are in need of assistance, request that through our congregational life team. However, I would ask that you find in our e-newsletter and also here on our Facebook page that announcements for our emergency financial assistance and send that and share that as widely as you're able so that we can assist persons who are in need at this time. I'm so grateful that we are in a position to offer at least modest help to those who may be struggling at this time. And I'm asking your assistance in sharing that information so that those who are in need, we might actually assist. All of these things are possible at MCC Portland because of your faithfulness, your faithfulness in your presence, your prayers of support, and your financial generosity.
As we prepare to worship with the giving of our offering, I'll remind you there are several ways that you can do that now. You can make your offering directly online through the link that's provided here. You can also use the text to give option from your mobile device. You can mail your offering to our physical address, which you find on the screen. Also, you can have an automatic offering sent from your financial institution as I do. So let's pray together as we worship with the giving of our offering. God, we're so grateful for the ways that you pour blessing upon blessing into our lives. What we pray is that you continue to open our minds and our eyes and our hearts to recognize all of the many ways that you bless us and that you open our hearts to share that blessing with as we grow in the image of you, a giving God in whose image we are created. In this moment, we pray for those who have already given, those who are giving at this moment, and those who are preparing to give, that all of these gifts might be blessed and multiplied, not only to strengthen our congregation, but to serve the community beyond us. In your holy name, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. may be like the Peter who, in this chaos, walks on water. And other of us might be like the Peter who, in the chaos, becomes frightened and begins to sink. Jesus was there with Peter in his fear. And Jesus reached out to Peter and caught him with his hand. This table is a reminder that no matter where we are in our lives, God is there with us. And on that night, so long ago, Jesus took the bread and he raised it and he blessed it. He broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. And he took the cup and he raised it and he blessed it. And he said, this is my blood, my essence poured out for you. 
invite you to join me in communion now. O oh, Holy One, just as Jesus reached out his hand to Peter in his time of need, in his fear, and in his doubt, may we feel your presence with us today. May we feel your hand reaching to catch us and to pull us close to you. Amen. Yeah. 
and I got love like an ocean. I got love like an ocean in my soul. We're so glad that you were able to share worship with us today. A reminder that our worships, our online worship services, are also available archived here on our Facebook page and now on our YouTube channel. So feel free to share links and invite friends to view our worship as you have shared our worship as well. And a reminder, before we bless one another as we part from one another, we do remain online for several minutes afterwards just to chat with one another in the comments section, say hello, check and see how people are doing. It's a wonderful time just to check in and engage with each other, even if our worship is officially concluded. So beloved friends, sisters and brothers, let us recall, we have not just watched church, we are the church. Please stay safe, stay well, stay in touch, go in peace.